Hey guys, Amy here with Garden Up. Today what I'm going to be doing is pruning this massive clematis right here. This guy has been here since before I've been caretaker of this property and uh, that was at least six years ago. I don't think I've ever pruned it back because I don't know what type of clematis it is. It was here before the client bought the house so they don't have the plant tag that says which type of plant this is. So we've just always erred on the side of caution and left it alone. But it is time to tidy this up a bit. There are two different types of clematises. One type blooms on current year's growth, okay? So it grows a shoot and it blooms on it in the same year. The other type blooms on previous year's growth. So it grows a stem and then it sets bud in those stems in the fall and it blooms the following spring. So if you hard prune it down in the spring, you're cutting off all of those buds and it will not bloom that year. So it's helpful to know which type of clematis you have before you start cutting on it. And hydrangeas are the same way. There are two types. And if you don't know which kind you have, best just not cut. And honestly, unless we know, we don't usually cut unless it needs to be done. So this is to the point where it needs to be done. And so I'm going to prune on this today and we're going to find out the hard way which type it is. If it doesn't bloom this year, then we know that in future, best to just leave it alone. Um, but if it does bloom, then we'll start whacking it back every year. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing I do when I approach a clematis like this is I take off all the top growth and just get that out of the way so I can see what I'm doing. But I do make sure that every cut I make is correct. So I'm not just hedging it back and then working back from there. I try to make sure that every time I make a cut, it's at a note and I'll get a close up of this. So right here, this joint is a node. And the interesting thing about this is this vine actually grew up somewhere in the back and it's coming back down. This is the side I want to cut on because this is the side that's connected to the base. So I'm gonna cut there. I may have spoken a little bit too soon when I said I try to make every one of these correct. This stage is not as important to make correct cuts every time. But what I am looking for is live growth on the inside. If it's a little bit green, then it should be alive. You can also do it this way. This one's not doing so well, but look at this right here. This has actually got growth coming out of it right now. This stem is very much alive. You can see the little bit of green on the inside there that is the cambium layer, also called the wick by old school gardeners. And if it's green, that means that juices are flowing and this is very much alive. The purpose of this step is to get the bulk of the mess off and out of the way so that you can get into the base to see what you're doing. The most important thing here is not to make a cut in the major stem uh, that is going to be kept. So take your time, start at the top if you can, go slow, this is not a race, just get all the mess off and get it out of the way. The other thing I want to mention is timing. When do you want to cut a clematis? And the timing, as soon as you start to see new growth, that's when you want to do this because you want to be able to see that cambium layer. You want to be able to see the green stems and you want to see where the nodes are alive and growing. Because if you make a cut on a branch that's dead, if this node was dead and this was the farthest one down, then you just killed that branch. So you want to know that the nodes are going to live and be okay. And that's why you want to wait until growth is just starting to emerge. But you don't want to wait until it's all green, because then it's already shot up all its energy that it's stored all winter. And that's not ideal either. That's a huge waste of energy for the plant. So try to get your clematises trimmed before they get really green, but just as those buds are starting to emerge.
so this is interesting. This is where the clematis was when it, when it was growing, and it still is, it's growing here happily. It's gotten so heavy that it's pushed over the trellis it was growing on. This was a four point trellis shaped like a pyramid and it's managed to push it over. But there's another clematis coming up from over here. And I'm not sure if this one has receded or if we put in another one that I don't remember. Um, but here it is. So and this is why I cut slowly because I was about to just whack on all of these branches and I could have made wrong cuts and done some damage. So prime example right here of why you want to take your time. So on this one, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate what I'm looking for when I'm pruning back the clematis. So on this branch, you'll see that there's a node here, a node here, a node here, and there's a node way down here. Now, when I'm hard pruning a clematis, I want to get as close to the base as I can while still staying in the zone of live growth. So this one you can see right here, there is some nice green. There's a lot of green right there and there's green in the place that I just cut. So before I go any farther, let me just check and make sure that I see growth. These buds are just starting to swell. And if I want to really confirm it, I can take a little bit of bark off and check that yes, there is cambium there. So I'm going to go down there because what happens is sometimes these older buds can die, but it'll still be alive up top. So I'm looking for swelling buds. I don't see, I do see buds here, but I don't see them swelling. So I'm actually going to stop right here on this branch. This branch, there's definitely a bud swelling right there. I'm sure if you can see that. And there's one swelling here. So I'm going to go all the way down to there. There for sure. Yeah, we're going to go down that far. And it's just a, each branch you just check and take your time. Don't go any farther than you know is right. This one has a nice bud right there that's green, so I'm going to take it off right there. This one's broken, so I'm going to take it all the way down. Okay, it's these thick woodier ones that are harder to identify where the uh, buds are. So I don't normally cut in these unless I can see clearly that there's growth coming, but here I see some on these side shoots. And I might even just leave some of it to hold it to the fence. I don't know. I haven't gotten that far yet. stage I want to clean out the base and I want to reattach this to the trellis. So what I'm going to do first is clean and then I'm going to straighten the trellis and then I'll lean it up and reattach it and train it back into um, its support structure here. And I'm just going to use my hands because they're as fast as any tool at this point. Thanks for watching that video. If you learned something new, let me know about it by leaving a comment down below and remember to hit subscribe if you haven't already so that you can get future content like this. I want to thank my crew for helping me get this done and my client for letting me film on site. On that note, have a great day and I will see you in the garden.